Kumo and I, we're not big fans of video games. We much prefer doing things like going out for a run, taking the airplane out, doing things with other living, breathing human beings and other dogs. Which makes it all the more confusing to say that we love driving the Nissan GTR and jump at any opportunity to drive another one. Well, Kumo was on the web and he saw that for 2020, there were some major changes specifically in the Nismo. So he called his friends over in Tennessee and said, hey man, can you send one of those things to us? So it turned up on our doorstep and now is a great opportunity for you and I to drive a supercar that most of you forgot even existed. Not entirely sure if we've covered this in previous GTR episodes, but there is a certain pageantry in starting one of these things. So let's hit the red button. And you cannot immediately put it into gear because it does a system check. Uh, but now the system check is done. So we go into gear here. Let's go out into the lane. And do we really need to do the whole proving it's fast? Well, being that I've got a hybrid next week and gas is really cheap right now, uh, perhaps we should. <laughs> Santa Maria, Madre de Dios. God, this thing, we can't carry too much speed going into this turn here. It's still public streets, really need to take this thing to a track. God, man. No, it's not surprising that it's fast. What's surprising is that lump has been there for 11 years. And it has taken the likes of Porsche and General Motors with the Corvette something like seven to 10 years just to catch up. Now that is a statement on engineering. One of the aspects of the GTR that has always been a debate is the transmission. I am one of the few people that likes this hard shifting transmission. I can tell you right at the top here, one major change is the placement of the shifters on the steering wheel now. I do not like this change, much prefer them when they do not move and they are connected to the steering column. Please change it back or at least give me the option. That being the case, let's go over to manual and now in manual. Remember, this is only six gears. The kind of shows the 11 years this has been around. Let's downshift a bit. Let's get to a lower gear. Oh, control misfire. Second gear, push a little hard around here. Come out, up, oh my God, you can still wind this thing out. And this is the reason why I have always, God, man, does that sound so good. This is one of the major reasons why I've actually liked this transmission. Yes, I would still prefer a manual, that ain't happening. Uh, it's usable, you can shift it like a manual with a clutch. For example, here I am going at a pretty high rate of speed and I can still downshift, even though it's against the better judgment of the engine. So instead of abusing this, let's go back to the higher gear, but you see my point. That's what makes this transmission stand out. Uh, if we can go back to the paddles as they were previously, that would be wonderful. Oh my God, this thing sounds wonderful. So a rather important change, which most likely you can see from that vantage point, carbon ceramic rotors fitted to a GTR for the first time. Uh, Nissan worked with Brembo on this, but neither of those two bits of information are as interesting as two other bits of information. Uh, first is the calipers. In the front, four pistons. In the back, six pistons. So they're catching up with Porsche on that, although Porsche just leapfrogged this with a 992 turbo that has 10 piston calipers in the front. And then there's the diameter of the rotors. In the back, grows from 15 inches to 15.3. In the front, grows from an already gargantuan 15.53 inches to 16.1. With that, let's take it back up the hill and see how they work. And God, this thing is fast. <laughs> oh. oh, Okay, there's definitely a difference. Not that the previous brakes didn't work, but they didn't quite 
put my face onto the hood of the car. But let's try that again. Here we go. And stop. Oh. Yes, indeed, it is that time again to play your favorite game in mine, the options game, and for the first time ever with a Nissan GTR. So let's dive right in. 2020 Nissan GTR Nismo for a manufacturer suggest, am I reading this correctly? 210,740 dollars for a Nissan Santa Maria Madre de Dios. That said, it is a supercar and will beat many other supercars. Uh, then we move on to a very short round of the options game because there's only two options. Premium paint, looks like white to me, but it is pearlescent, $1,000. And then a combo of the carpeted formats with the cool GTR logo, as well as a first aid kit, don't know why those are connected, $425. Then a destination charge, almost as much as the actual car, $1,795. I don't know why it's so much. Oh, they're probably taking a page out of the 300SL Gullwing we saw in that episode where you could crate the car and ship it over the ocean in a crate. We'll have to look into that. Anyway, total price, belt in $213,960. Now, while we both let that wash over us, I'm going to give you another piece of information. This is a very rare car. Last year, Nissan worldwide sold a total of 212 of these. So yes, very expensive, but you're not gonna see yourself coming and going. Okay, well we passed not one, but two Pre-I. Uh, I wanna point something out that is practical. Uh, notice this is the whole wizardry from the game developer folks. But uh, it's taken 11 years. However, there is, uh, here we go, Apple CarPlay in a GTR. Now, uh, for the avoidance of doubt, it is not wireless. Uh, it is a pretty good integration because it takes up the whole screen. That said, the screen is a bit square for me. I'd like to see it more 16 by 9. Overall, this was a change what, a year ago uh, with a different dash that is on all levels of Nissan GTRs. I kind of preferred the previous dash. It wasn't as fancy as this. Like, this one has the suede and you got the suede headliner, which I do like, but I like the purposefulness of not so much just the design, but the materials they used in the previous derivation of the interior of the GTR. It's not entirely news that Ray's Engineering manufactures the wheels for the GTR, but what is new is this specific Ray's Engineering wheel. Call me an OCD design freak. I love the fact that they put this Nismo here with a little red O on the side of the wheel. I would be worried to curb it. Uh, it's a 20 inch diameter, black finish in this case. But what's far more interesting about this is the tire itself. So you and I are used to seeing Pirelli's, Michelin, Goodyear that make special formulations as well as tread patterns for performance cars. Uh, from my recollection, this is the first time I'm seeing Dunlop do it, but they went a step farther here. You know how when you build a track car, you generally don't put the biggest wheels on them because you do want more sidewall for cornering. And the folks at Nissan and Dunlap, they kind of thought through that. And this tire does have more sidewall for cornering to the point where at least with Nissan testing it, it's improved cornering by 5%. On public streets, I don't think I'll be able to get that 5%, but let's at least try for 2%. Oh my God. God, this is still so good. So good. Can I honestly tell you that, oh my God, the steering with more sidewall so you can have better cornering makes a difference. Mm, that's perhaps a bridge too far, but God, I missed this thing. I completely forgot how amazingly good this thing is. How dare you and I, car guys and girls, forget about a supercar that has been around in our lives for, God, since 2009. The last time you and I drove a Nismo GTR was on a drag strip in Tennessee. 
Yes, that was an incredibly good day at the office, but that was five or six years ago. There have been some changes, but overall, it still kind of looks the same. I would argue it looks a lot meaner. And that's because of some changes in body panels. But those changes didn't come about because of design. It came about more for some functional changes. Uh, like, for example, the fender is now made of carbon fiber. They are 10 pounds less, but they have these louvers in here that create 15 pounds additional downforce. The hood, also now made of carbon fiber, 4.4 pounds less. Uh, the roof, made of carbon fiber, 8.8 .8 pounds less, but also on offer as an option on the track derivation of the GTR. Then there's the trunk lid as well as the spoiler carbon fiber, and then the sills at the bottom, those are carbon fiber. Overall, it's what, 23 pounds different if you add it all up. Not a huge difference when you're considering the car still weighs 3,865 pounds. But yes, it does look really mean. Not exactly the ideal candidate for our top secret torture chamber that is Portuguese Bend. And I can't say I'm really looking forward to this part of the episode, but let's handicap it. Go into our mode, <laughs> and here we go. Uh, there. Uh, actually, that's not horrible. Let's see how this goes. Granted, it's stiff. Ugh. But here's what's not expected, there is composure. If I put my science teacher hat on for a minute, I would guess the composure is there because of weight, not because of suspension on a hard finish. Oh, okay, there is something you and I need to discuss here. And that is the acoustics. Uh, when this thing first came out, all of us were over the moon about the performance this thing could return. But none of us really paid attention to the acoustics. And now, 11 years on, I know I've been spending a lot of time on that. Fun fact, you do notice the acoustics because that 911 Turbo that we recently drove, there is no sound whatsoever coming out of that thing and it can produce the same kind of performance results. I honestly can't tell you which I like better. I mean, listen to the transaxle in the back, the way the, sh the transmission and the shifter and every oil cooling, whatever it is, has to do its test when it starts. It all makes these weird noises but I would argue that's what connects you with the car. We need that imperfection in our life. We need that, that rawness. It's most likely the av geek in me because when a machine makes noises like this, when it's loud and it's very fussy, it's telling you what's going on, which is always a good thing for preventative maintenance and just being in touch with said vehicle. <laughs> Can I point out that in just a couple of rips up and down the road here, I've gone through about a quarter of a tank of gas. Yes, a quarter of a tank. <laughs>